everybody, I'm Aaron Simmons. This is Philosophy for Where We Find Ourselves, July 3rd, 2020. I have said many times on this program that charity is required in order for democracy to flourish. Second, I have said that critique is the way we care about the soul of each other because truth is more important than our being right. And this leads to the idea that we should try to make our ideas clear enough to be understood. Today, I simply want to respond to some objections, some charitable critique I've received to some videos I've made. And I think this is important because I try to make these videos short, but in doing this, I often have to not consider a lot of objections or add some qualifications that I would if I were expanding this, for example, into an academic book. There are three things that I want to address really quickly. First, yesterday, I talked about divine hiddenness and I had some viewers who said, look, why isn't it that at the end you came back around and showed that theism has robust defenses against divine hiddenness objections? My response is simply, I will. But right now, I wanted the objections to sit in us, to, to be something that call us to wrestle rather than tying things up in a nice little bow so that we can ignore objections, ignore critique, so long as we are allowed to return to the safety of our original views when the time is up. The second thing that I wanna talk about is recently I've said some things about the way in which white evangelicals in particular have often been so singularly focused on abortion that they have forgotten about racial justice. And this is ironic given the fact that it was racial and gendered exclusion that actually gave rise to, in many ways, the singular focus on abortion. Some people have suggested, look, that's fine and that's important, but there are many issues that the white evangelical focus on abortion has precluded, has, has forestalled. And I think that that's exactly right. We could talk about the environment, we could talk about immigration, about healthcare, about poverty, all sorts of concerns that I think must be part of a robust Christian social ethic. But when we are only single voters, I think that that makes us less compelling, not only as democratic citizens, but also as Christians. And the third is the video I did a couple days ago where I had my mask and my face shield on and I talked about what it means to be in person and why I favored a remote option anytime it is possible in the next few months. I got some objections that I think are absolutely right that said, look, this acts as if everybody can go remote. And there are many communities, especially those that are historically marginalized and bear the impact of how whiteness has created disparities in terms of socioeconomic power. So for people of color and indigenous communities in particular, the idea of saying, hey, let's just go remote, misses the structural injustice by which technological access is in fact then not possible. What motivated me to make that video was watching William Barber talk about the death rate disparities in communities of color and indigenous peoples. It was because I was trying to say, this is a low hanging fruit. If we can keep fewer people from being physically proximate, those who have to be physically proximate, in fact, have a safer environment in which to live and work. There is no replacement for systemic and structural transformation of a society marked by decades and centuries of injustice on the basis of racial identity. We've got to fix that if we are ever going to be able to have something like a pandemic that doesn't then continue to reveal the sorts of disparities that we are now seeing. These disparities are reflections of evil that has become ingrained in our society and we must work together to overcome it. But I still think for those who can do remote options, they should do remote options because it is the low hanging fruit that makes possible then becoming innovative and spending our energies to think about how do we provide those sorts of opportunities for everyone, not only for certain communities. Let's work on this together. I don't think that this is the end of any of these conversations, but merely a way hopefully to continue to invite you to think with me. I look forward to continuing to think with you tomorrow unless a piano falls on our heads.